uh, I'm going to pre present something like uh, a prefabrication in a, in, a, in a digital construction. And uh, uh, this is, I should be honest that I'm choosing a uh, eye-catching topic that uh, the, would software replace engineers. And uh, I do think this is quite successful. Yes, so when I published this in, in my WeChat, I, I got a very hot response from my colleagues and friends that uh, yes or no, I'm interested to know <laughs> what's the answer. And, uh, and, and please say yes and oh, oh, all of this, and I, so, I, so I just feel it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's becoming a, a common uh, thing that uh, our fellow engineers are considering about, so I'm going to be a bit uh, more serious about this topic. So um, structural engineers, that, um, this uh, profession that actually emerged, I think, is almost just uh, 100 years. And, uh, I think at the very beginning, we used hand calculation to carry out our structural design, usually with a simplified model. But uh, when the computers had uh, emergency, we use uh, very much the finite, finite element analysis on and, uh, and a very comprehensive digital model. And, uh, and the, the latest engineering software is not, it's actually encapsulated those um, fine element uh, details and presented the results in uh, engineering's language. So uh, the most recent development that uh, we, we, with, with those software, uh, commercial software, that many design automation work were uh, already automated. So in, uh, in other words, we can observe a uh, no need transfer from human engineers to machine software. So, and th this is, I think, is in, uh, irreversible. So, if we, how much we can step further on this? I will take this um, uh, China Zoom project we, we just finished as an example for the for a case study. So, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's this one, I think everyone have a a uh, CTBS journal that we said with a cover story on this uh, project. So I, I won't uh, too much on the on the background. It's a it's a it's a um, headquarters of the City Group, uh, developer City Hehe, and uh, uh, the we w work with architects, uh, architect KPF, and also BAD to uh, on this project. We are the structural engineer. It's a 528 meter tower uh, in a high, very high seismic zone. So. And uh, because of the shape of the tower, it's a curved, uh, zone like uh, tall building. So we have uh, the structural engineer has many things to do. Um, the uh, I, I would um, briefly introduce the structure system of the of the tower so that you can have more more um, uh, idea of the of the background of our work. So it's a, it's quite a symmetrical structure layout that with. Uh, uh, maybe eight mega columns at the corner, and uh, 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 with the uh, with mega brace and uh, uh, transfer charts to form a, a, a mega frame at the perimeter, and uh, with a with a concrete a mainly concrete core in the in the center. It's a it's a it's a dual system, so that's formed by these two um, separate. Um, Subsystem, and uh, the core is a is a is a concrete um, uh, concrete core mainly. But uh, in the in the bottom, about forty stories are embedded with steel plate to improve their um, the the seismic uh, uh, performance. And also with some some uh, hidden uh, steel section columns on the and the braces in the upper floors at the, at the uh, critical area. So these are the composite shear walls. I think the, we, we uh, the, the colleagues uh, discussed this uh, yesterday in, in, in another session. And so it's a it's a really a, a um, really a good uh, a system in the seismic zone. So to um, with the steel plate to Im improve the uh, ductility uh, of the of a conventional concrete shear wall. And uh, the user will use, uh, use those uh, so-called double lintel beam to um, to. to give more um, ductility because the, 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 those double beams would, uh, would uh, perform separately for gravity and, uh, and for lateral. So, 
And um, this, this perimeter structure, the mega column is, is very huge, of course. And uh, uh, at the bottom uh, is uh, eight columns at, at, uh, um, at corners. And at the, at the bottom zone, it's, uh, they merge together to four mega columns, each one uh, with the area of 60 uh, meters square. And uh, so the, and the, they, they follow the curved uh, profile of the tower to, to the top. And, uh, but, and, and the, the sectional area uh, reduced um, gradually. So these are the, uh, the uh, section of those uh, mega columns and, uh, at the bottom and uh, at, the, at the typical floor. So it's a, it's a so-called uh, uh, multi-cell uh, concrete fill tube section with steel plate interconnected and the concrete infilled and also with some uh, steel casings. The, uh, these are some uh, details of the, the uh, connection. Very huge, uh, mega column, very, uh, bell chairs and, uh, and mega braces. So the task for a structure engineer to work together with, with the architects, uh, from the very beginning, the, this, the, this joint shape has actually undergone very much uh, uh, um, variations uh, because of the, the uh, architect's studies on the, on the, on the messing of the, of the tower. Yeah, because at the very beginning, it, it was intended to be a multi-purpose uh, tower with an uh, office, uh, a residential, and a hotel, and everything. So it's a, it's a, we um, worked with uh, architects to, to, to study uh, all these uh, messing options, which are, you can, you can imagine, it's, uh, it's, it's quite there. It's quite, um, uh, create a lot of um, uh, impact on the uh, structure per performance because of this, uh, this um, the, the, uh, the uh, change on the very uh, fundamental parameters, and also the the f function changes as the as the um, the, the uh, design progressed. At the very beginning, uh, as I said, it's a multi-purpose building, and uh, but gradually the uh, some functions are uh, removed. Uh, the, uh, so it's first the the um, Hotel are over removed, and then the residential were removed. So finally, it becomes a uh, mostly office tower. And uh, so the our structure system, because the at the beginning the uh, the, the client would not prefer a uh, cross bracing in the in the residential and hotel zone. So it's a uh, we use a uh, closely spaced uh, moment frame a tube at the top zones. So but it's, and at the end, it's be, uh, the final the finalized design becomes a um, uniform uh, mega braced uh, frame system at the perimeter. So, and also this zoning thing that has been, uh, there are quite a lot of options that studied. And uh, it, the impact to the structure engineer is that you, the, the, all these uh, bell chairs and, the, and the, all, the, all the angles of mega brace and all, these, all, the, all the geometric configuration as well will, be, will be changed uh, for, for all these um, studies. So, we, uh, we designed to, we have developed a, a, a set of tools. Um, the, uh, actually, we, we call it a parametric uh, design uh, environment. Is, um, so those environment, uh, those software based on the architectural messing configuration of the building, it uh, mimic the top-down system decomposition logic in a structural engineer's mind, and uh, it will generate and regenerate the analytical model automatically. So this is how it works. And uh, at the, before when the structure engineer build a structure model, we are going to deal with, uh, for this kind of, uh, this scale of building, we are going, we, are, we have to deal with, I did a calculation, it's about, about 400,000 variables. This include the uh, connectivity of the members, the uh, section of members, the loadings, the, all, all these, all these um, things, uh, all this information contained in a structure model. And, uh, uh, but uh, we 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 um, but they are not just uh, separated individual information. They are actually uh, they, this information are connected and they are derived from uh, about one thousand high level uh, 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 fundamental parameters, which we can see here. It's about we can, I can say about uh, uh, for this building, there's um, uh, one hundred thirty geometric variables, like um, one hundred fifty. Uh, this uh, this is called uh, the the configuration. Is uh, is the Connectivity and the topology of uh, structure uh, members, and the uh, sectional uh, material size, uh, like this. So, 
is that actually we can, uh, in the, in the uh, recent uh, parametric design software, we can, we can m mimic this, um, this, uh, the logic that the structure engineer build a structure model from these fundamental parameters. So in, the, in this software. So th this, I think many uh, of the know, may have known, the RINOS is a, is a uh, geometric modeling software uh, used quite extensively by architects and other uh, professions. And the Grasshopper, the parametric uh, uh, modeling plugin for this, for the RINO. And uh, some of our uh, in-house developed uh, uh, software, we call it, you, you, if you are familiar with Rhino, you know that all those plugins are named uh, with, uh, with an animal. So, so we have uh, the, this uh, salamander and uh, some other like a monkey and uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, it's like these are these the, the two tools and in the, in the bottom actually uh, brought in the structural information rather than just geometric information to the Rhino uh, uh, environment. So that's we make it uh, from a geometric modeling software to a structural modeling software. So this is the way we we are doing the we receive the architectural messing information from directly from Rhino and the Grasshopper, and uh, so it's it's a, it's a really a, a, in a very high level collaboration between architects and engineers. So the and the we derive this geometric uh, center lines uh, with the with uh, with this parametric modeling, and uh, we add in the structural information also in. The, I say the salamander is also plugging for the for the Rhino. So we add in this uh, structure information. So the and then the uh, the uh, writer um, output all those information to the to the uh, commercial analysis software like eTypes or uh, our or GSA is our Arab software. So it comes out the analysis results and uh, all those things. Those um, this this design iteration. Is, uh, you can imagine that uh, we, because we, we only model that those 1,000 uh, fundamental parameters, so it's very easy to change all those, um, all those parameters to generate all the, all, all the, um, all the uh, variables in the, in the, uh, in all the information in the inner structure model, so, and, uh, and, and, that's, and then carry out the analysis automatically. So you said that, and we, uh, Developed for a few um, uh, components like this is like a you can you can imagine the prefabrication in a in a in a building and this is prefabrication in the in a in a digital world and uh, so we we it's a with a with a given uh, geometry we can we can put in the the structure framing system to any shape and with 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 uh, different options like uh, with a vertically down uh, column column line or uh, or a uh, even in space column line, so these uh, these options you can you can choose, and uh, like we have a um, like a, this one truss component we use for the to to build the bell chest of the of the of the tower. So you can you can it can fit into any any uh, geometry, and also the 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 mega <coughs> the mega brace components is a is a, you can it's kind of, it's, it's really a, it's we have a have a gap in the in the in the bracing so that it can we can uh, accommodate the the the, the uh, Bell chassis. So all these things, all these these are the tools that we had developed over a few years, as you say, uh, with with the previous projects. So now we have this. Uh, we call it from the architectural machine. We got this parametric model, and then um, the analytical model was generated from this model. Uh, as, as you say, the eighty to ninety percent automatically, and uh, with some ten percent uh, human, uh, the uh, some some information, uh, uh, some. Um, uh, Special input by the engineers. So uh, I'll give an example of how this uh, how this would uh, would uh, would uh, improve our design. So these are the, the for this curve building the structure. Uh, of course, the structure uh, system should not cannot be uh, uh, a fully curved one. Follow the architect's profile. It, it's, it will becomes a becomes a series of of. Plan that fit as close as possible to the architect's uh, to the slab edge in in, in simple so that, so that um, we can maximize the in, the internal space uh, the, the for the for the users. So that's how we we put this lim limit that we the structure to be a, a maintain a minimum uh, 500 millimeter uh, close to the slab edge. So to so to uh, but uh, uh, of course we need to 
consider that the, for this uh, uh, very high-risk building, we need a very uh, we need to maximize our the lever arm of the mega column in the perimeter to resist uh, lateral load, and uh, and also we need to to, to consider the simplification of the uh, of the structure geometry so that it won't um, uh, bring too much uh, trouble in the in the construction. So the principles are keep the geometry in one plane, and the re we reduce the kinks in the mega columns uh, center line, and also we, we, we consider the section shape and the reductions, and so on. So you can, you can see this, this study, we, 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 um, we can generate a lot of different options of, of different geometry to test the ang how these angles impact on the, on the structured um, uh, stiffness and also on the, on the distance from facade to the, to the structure. So you, different options give different uh, uh, this, uh, along the whole, whole, all the floors of the tower. And uh, also, these um, this kinks of the, uh, is, uh, there's two options that you can either be uh, one kink at each uh, bell chart um, zone, and or it, uh, you can use two kinks at that, at that, um, at that point, because uh, uh, it's, uh, there are difference on the, on the uh, structure system, because the two kinks gives a better uh, angle for the mega brace. So it increases the st structure stiffness, but it will, uh, introduce um, excessive uh, uh, shear force transfer between the core and the, and the perimeter. So, so it's a, there's a, there's a trade-off between these two, uh, two aspects. So, so we, we studied all this and we, we see these parametric design tools. Um, so these are, uh, we, we, we finally find this, uh, the final geometry that um, for, the, uh, for the top zones which have uh, higher uh, curvature, we, 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 we use two uh, uh, kink points, and also the you, you can see the this the distance of column face uh, column face to the to the facade maintained at about one meter, and this this is the minimum distance from facade to column uh, outer face uh, for most of the floors are maintained at 500 millimeter. So this and. Uh, uh, Based on this um, uh, on this parametric design environment, we, we can uh, we can therefore we can we can produce other informations for the structure uh, engineers uh, like the uh, you, for for example there's a, a final element analysis for the connection. It's a, it can uh, whenever the design changes, it can we can uh, uh, produce those um, uh, uh, those parts and then using the uh, using the automatic machine to in the fundament, final element analysis software and uh, to create uh, the to uh, create the, uh, the nonlinear analysis model uh, on, on, on the fly and also to be, be cut this section of the of the in rhino to produce the plans for each floor and uh, uh, of course there are some post processing work and uh, uh, this but but this environment has largely um, uh, helped our, our work by by working on so many um, different options at the uh, early stage and at the uh, preliminary design stage. So this is one example is that this, we, we found that uh, this um, bail out of the, at, at, at top, this, uh, and this narrow neck at the, in the middle does uh, introduce some uh, um, uh, uh, a more uh, extra burden to the core because of the smaller uh, Leave arm of the of the perimeter structure, and also because of the negative shear of this of this shape. So, so this is we we find this in the in the uh, nonlinear analysis. Uh, because it, this by this uh, we can carry on and on, and so so we can just uh, uh, we can find out this problem, and then and then in the to to just change the design and uh, at the, at the next uh, um, stage. So to um, conclude the this. Um, uh, Benefits so at first it's, it's, uh, it's really a time saving to for all those um, uh, uh, different uh, options. You can you can imagine that it's a traditional way. It's it's always takes a time long time to to uh, deal with the, the late design changes. But uh, in here it's that it's it's really easier in, in the by uh, by uh, changing a little little uh, 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 very fundamental parameters. So so the, to to change the whole thing. And uh, we are able to deliver more. And actually, we, we calculate that, that the, for the whole um, design uh, process in the schematic and the preliminary design, and we, we, we studied 854 options 
uh, different schemes. So, so it can all are with, with, uh, with analysis results. So it's uh, much easier to do, to do more now. And uh, also, the, we add value to the client because the, this, um, this, uh, to, uh, by minimize the distance between column and the, and the facade, this, uh, the, the, the area can be, this, this is called unfavorable area outside the, the column, is, can be as large as 8,700 meters square for this tower. So it's an it's a, it's a, it's a, um, invisible benefit, but it's, it's, it's there. So it's a, it gives engineers actually the freedom to explore more. It's a, at a, um, before we are unable to, to explore more, more uh, so many options, but now you said you are enabled. And, um, it, and the recent work is that we um, uh, also adding more the, the called the size and the material optimization modules with this um, uh, whole, uh, into this whole environment so that uh, can automatically optimize the sections uh, according to, the, uh, to their contribution of to uh, lateral stiffness. So uh, that's back to the topic now. And uh, so it looks like the software are taking much of engineers' work. Uh, but I too, I'm, I'm tend to be a more uh, optimistic on, on this. And uh, my thinking is that it's, uh, it's uh, represent a small paradigm shift to engineers' role is that before that we, we take too many time on the very detailed calculation things. And uh, now it uh, gives more time for engineers for the, to, for the creativity, for the knowledge management, for, to do the to coordination for more options with, with architects and um, to carry out high level design with all these we call uh, smart tools. And uh, they are really getting smarter now. <laughs> And uh, so, uh, for the time being, my answer to the to the question in the topic is uh, is still no. Uh, however, I think the this new technology just does lead to a um, restructure. I'd say to the to the team of the engineer, an engineering firm that we are now more have we have uh, designers, engineers, uh, programmers, because the con computer programming the scripter. Like, uh, and also beam manager and technician, it's a, it's, it will be different from, uh, from before. So, and, also, and of course, that, uh, those physical world, the, the size, I think is full of uncertainty that we have to be taken care of by engineers and builders anyway. And uh, is it, this is the photo of the site um, last month, the mega column, you can, you can see the size of the column and the, the, how the, the scale of the workers. And um, this is the high, the the, um, the central core with the with that uh, steel plate uh, built uh, already, and then the rebus will come later with when uh, and before the concrete uh, will be poured. So thank you very much. <laughs>